Well, how long did you think it would be from war breaks out in Ukraine to Boris Johnson attempts to exploit that situation to further his own objectives? And I'm not even talking about the fact that he's used it to encourage the media to sweep issues like Partygate under the rug to shift the focus away from all the mistakes and errors that he made during the pandemic that led to the unnecessary loss of thousands and thousands of lives, people's lives being disrupted and all the issues around Brexit and the cost of living crisis and all of that stuff, which has suddenly come off of the front pages. On top of this, he's trying to use the crisis as an excuse to resume fracking and authorise six new oil and gas platforms in the North Sea. And the argument that this is somehow about energy security or about making ourselves more independent of supplies from Russia is completely, completely misleading. First of all, the UK gets between 1 and 3% of its gas from Russia. So if you want to save that much energy, just like switch your heating off when you go away, it's really, as, it's as small as that. And secondly, the lead time from, you know, a, a license being approved to scope out a project to production actually beginning on an oil and gas platform is about 28 years. I mean, if you think that the war in Ukraine is gonna last for 28 years, we shouldn't be building oil and gas platforms, we should be building bunkers. And on top of which, where does 28 years take us? Let's just wheel out the maths degree. It takes us to 2050, the exact year that the government has agreed that we're going to go carbon neutral. So how's that going to work? Yeah. Absolute gibberish what is going on. The way that we should be responding to this situation is to be focusing on renewables. The UK has huge supplies of wind power, tidal power, wave power, hydropower, solar power, all of those things are out there. That's what, that's what nature does. And in fact, the UK is quite well positioned in quite a few of those areas. We also should be looking at ways to improve our energy efficiency. For example, the UK is full of old, leaky, not very airtight housing that could be retrofitted to massively improve its energy efficiency and massively reduce the amount of energy that we need to use. In fact, I can't help thinking that somebody recently reminded me about this by supergluing themselves to the M25 and getting themselves all over the papers, one of the few things that did get some attention for the issue. It's such a no-brainer. It's so straightforward. Meanwhile, instead, we've got Kwasi Kwarteng, the Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy Secretary, saying that he backs North Sea production because it is, and I quote, good for jobs. Yeah, really, we want more jobs working on off-seas, offshore oil rigs. Are you sure it would be better to have more jobs like retrofitting homes to make them more efficient or helping build wind turbines and solar power energy farms. Surely we all know the best jobs. How much do they have to hate working class people to be like, don't worry, good for you, we've got you a job on an offshore oil platform. Like, um, then he says it's good for energy security, but there's nothing good for security about contributing to the planet melting. That won't improve anybody's security because it will mean more and more people being flooded and burnt and heated out of their normal place of living. It'll mean more droughts, it'll mean more starvation. And as a result, the last thing that will improve is security. He says it's good for tax revenue to fund public services. So they dig oil out of the North Sea and then they overcharge us for it. And then somewhere in the difference between those two, um, they take a, a certain amount of tax and uh, then good news, they're gonna spend a little bit of that on building a hospital for us where we'll all be stuck after the planet catches fire and we're all drowning in the floods that have been caused. None of this is even remotely joined up. We could get tax revenue from building renewable power stations and all of that stuff. Then he says it will be kickstarting a hydrogen economy, but hydrogen is just not really deemed a suitable fuel for heating people's homes in most cases. It might be a workable fuel for use in vehicles and things like that with ongoing technological development, but it's not gonna replace the 85% of energy that we spend on our heating and hot water bills in the UK. It's not gonna do any of that. And the idea that we're gonna dredge oil out of the North Sea and then we're just gonna use it to make clean hydrogen is just mythological. Nobody believes that. And then he also says it will be good for CCUS, which is carbon capture and storage. 
So great news. We're going to dig oil out of the North Sea and release tons of carbon. And then there'll be more carbon in the atmosphere for us to catch. It's, it's lit. It's yeah. I mean, it, it's true. It would be easier to, cra to catch criminals if we just opened all the jails and let them run around the streets, wouldn't it? Because there'd be loads of them. What? How are you not understanding that none of this makes even the slightest bit of sense? The reason energy prices are sky high is because of corporate greed. It's got nothing to do with Russia. It's got nothing to do with Ukraine. It's got nothing to do with trying to be renewable. It's got nothing to do with a green agenda, which is vital and is the only thing that will save the planet and the next generation. It is 100% about greed and I can prove it to you. So I've just had an email from British Gas which says that the cost of my electricity will be going up from 20.7 pence per kilowatt hour to 29.6 pence per kilowatt hour. So a serious major, major increase. Now, here's the question. It's gone up from like basically 20p a kilowatt hour to 30p a kilowatt hour. If I put some solar panels or a wind turbine on my roof and I generated more electricity than I needed, and I wanted to sell that electricity back to British Gas. I mean, presumably they'd be delighted, right? Because, you know, they wouldn't be buying it from the Russians. I'm definitely not Russian. This is exactly what we want the country to focus on, small scale renewables. I mean, this is brilliant. So what would they pay me, given that my current bill has gone up from 20p per kilowatt hour to 30p a kilowatt hour? The answer is 1.5p per kilowatt hour. I mean, it's just meaningless, isn't it? It's just meaningless. It tells you everything that you need to know. None of this is about energy security or efficiency or what's best for people in Britain or what's best for the planet or any of those things, because actually all of those things align when it comes to what we should do next. And all of those things align and say that what Boris Johnson is doing is evil, corrupt bullshit. See you next week.